Hello and welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. Today I'm going to be explaining the Asana portfolios feature and workload and just talking about how you can use these features to really see the big picture of what's going on in your Asana account and really see a high level view of the projects, the status of things that are going on. Now don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to get updates about new videos about Asana, Pipedrive, Zapier and other productivity tools. And if you do want help with Asana and other productivity tools, check out details in the description below this video to learn how you can get in touch with me and learn about my consulting services. So to get into this video, first of all, we are talking about the portfolios feature here, which will require a business subscription to Asana. Uh, so obviously check out this video. This will give you a bit of a sense of what's possible with portfolios so you can make that decision about whether it's worth upgrading or not. As I said at the start, this feature is designed to show you the big picture of what's going on in your account. It replaced the old dashboard feature that we had a couple of years ago, and it's uh, it's it's showing you uh, a few different projects that you've added to the portfolio. Now, actually, if I go back to my portfolios tab here on the sidebar, the first thing I want to show is you can have multiple portfolios. So this is great for things like, let's say you have a client facing business and you need to manage different types of client or different types of client projects. So you can see here, I've got a portfolio called SEO clients. I could have another portfolio for, let's say, uh, Facebook clients or something else. So it's just think of a portfolio as a collection of projects and a project can be in multiple portfolios at once. So if I then click into one of my portfolios, here I am in the SEO clients one, you can see three projects here and you'll actually see them on the sidebar. I have Apple, Tesla and SpaceX, the green, blue and orange ones, which we can see right here. So projects get added to portfolios. That's the first thing you kind of need to understand. We're not adding tasks in here. It's, it, it's a project level type of dashboard. So here are my three projects. I can add a new project up here. I can just type the name of my project to add them in here. Once I've added my project, there's a few key things that this shows me. Number one, it shows me if I have any overdue tasks. It's kind of warning me here I have an overdue, overdue task. And if I click on this row, I can see a graph down here and I can see information about the project. In fact, this is basically the progress screen that you will see if you click on that progress tab in your project. This is basically what we're looking at here. I can even click here to then go straight and see what those overdue tasks are. I also get to see things like uh, if there's a recent status update. And this is one of the really um, sort of overlooked features of Asana projects and portfolios that people often don't use, but I think it's really worth getting into the habit of using. And that's definitely a way to get more out of portfolios. So really it's the responsibility of the project owner, so that's me in this case, to update and set my status on a regular basis. So I could say, right, this one, this project is now on track. And I could say launch looks successful and I'm just gonna you know post my status here okay so this is just you know the status is generally a few sentences about how the project is going and your setting is the project you know on track at risk or off track and now if I go back to my portfolio I can see my status here this is really useful because it's just a very quick bird's eye view of what's going well and where do I need to maybe um, you know, put some attention in. So I might be maybe look at all the ones that are at risk or in danger. And actually I could do that up here. I can sort my project by status. And so now it's gonna show me everything in, on track, at risk and uh, in danger in that particular order. So these sorting options are really powerful as well. So we've got our statuses there. You also get to see task progress. And if I hover my mouse there, you will see it literally shows there are 61% tasks complete. There are five incomplete and eight completed tasks. So it's really just counting the tasks that you have left. So that's something important to keep in mind. With this figure, it does not count subtasks. It's only counting those parent level tasks in the main project. So just keep that in mind when you are looking at that number. You can switch this progress, so the progress type we can switch up here to milestones. And so you can see here I've got three milestones complete. Again, if I click on my row, I can see my milestones here. So I have one uh, major milestone left. I get to see the dates of the project. So if this pro project has a particular date range, like it's happening during a certain month, or this one here that has a particular due date, I can apply a date range here. And again, this is all sortable, so I could sort my projects by time frame. Uh, priority is a field that's included by default, so I can set the priority of a project. And you can as well set up your own, your own fields, just like you can set up custom fields in a project, you can set up fields here in a portfolio to appear at the project level. So here's an example, I've created one here called monthly budget. Let's actually, why don't we create a new one now? Let's give it a name like um, uh, client name, let's just say. So client name, this is gonna be a text field. We're gonna add that now. 
And so you see I get a new column here called client name. And in Apple, I'm going to say, you know, Tim Cook. SpaceX is Elon Musk. And so it's a nice way of um, adding more information and seeing again that big picture view of key information about all my projects in one place. This is actually great. I've seen a lot of clients use spreadsheets to do this in the past. This is kind of a similar spreadsheet style layout, but obviously it's all native and live in your Asana account. And then finally, you can see the project owner as well. Again, I can sort by owner. So I could say, look at just Paul's projects or look at them, uh, you know, his John's as well. And I can group them all by person. So that is the portfolio view, like I said, really designed to see the big picture of what's going on. Key things to remember, updating the status on a regular basis, ticking tasks off as well. Some times people don't check their tasks off as being complete because they want to keep that record open. Remember the tasks don't disappear from the project. You can still search them and view in uh, completed tasks. So tick off your tasks to make sure that progress is up to date as well. Um, but yeah, the key thing I think is just making sure project owners are updating their status because obviously the information that you see here is only as good as how up to date it is. The other key thing that we get to see here in portfolios, and I have a separate video on this, is workload. So I can click here and I can see for these three separate projects, who is doing what. And so for the month of October, I can see here's Paul's work across the Apple, SpaceX and Tesla projects. I can see it's going red here because Paul's actually over capacity at this particular point in time. Um, and the way we actually set this up is you can add effort to your project up here. So I've, I've set up an, a type of effort called hours. Um, I can edit my effort settings here. But typically time or hours is going to be the most common way people tend to measure effort in a collection of projects because we can kind of forecast, you know, how long tasks will take to complete. So if I edit my effort and capacity, I can say here the default maximum number of hours that each person has a week is 40. Uh, John in this case is a part-time worker, so he only has 20. Paul has 40. And so that's why we can see this red here is because this particular task is taking 10 hours. So that hours field that we set up, that gets inherited into all my projects. And uh, now we can see, um, because I have 10 hours due on this day, that's obviously too much for one day. Uh, I only have a capacity of eight hours per day. And so it's, it's highlighting here that Paul has too much, too much work to do. And so, yeah, this is all live. It's all connected to your projects as well. So if you are updating these tasks back in the project rather than here on, in the workload field uh, view, then uh, it's all connected. So this is, again, a nice big picture of uh, not just the status of my projects, but within those projects, how much is everyone doing? Who's got capacity for more work? So that is a bit of a look at the Asana portfolios feature. It gives you a bit of an idea of um, what you're going to see, what you're going to get from that if you are deciding whether to upgrade to that business plan. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below and thank you very much for watching this video.